Okay, the solutions to homework set number nine for EC111 are as follows. On the first problem, we want to solve the following RC circuit when the input is constant, 100 volts. The first trick is convert everything to phasors. The input becomes 100 plus J0, that's 100 volts DC. The frequency is zero. This is actually 100 times one. One is e to the zero t, or cosine of zero. A capacitor becomes an open circuit, infinity ohms at DC. So to sum the current to zero, I'm going to be adding in zero current from the capacitors. Basically means you can ignore capacitors at DC. Now I want to write the node equations. That's the current left, V1 minus V0 over 100, plus V1 minus 0 over 200, plus V1 minus V2 over 5. Likewise, NO2 and NO3 gives you three equations, three unknowns. Uh, four equations and four unknowns if you include V0 equals 100. Now to solve, group the terms, throw into MATLAB, replace the matrix form, and then throw in MATLAB. So once you input A and B, the volt is just the inverse of A times B. So it should have 93 volts, 88 volts, and 86 volts. To check your answer in part sim, or oh, bite my tongue, to check your circuit in circuit lab, I apply 100 volts DC, 0 volts AC. The frequency doesn't matter because the amplitude is 0 at AC. And now I do simulate, add expression, adding V0, V1, V2, render DC solver, gives me exactly the same answers 93 volts, 88 volts, 86 volts. So apparently we did it right. For AC analysis, what you do is take the input and the frequency, convert everything to phasors. The input is 100 sine 20 pi t. In phasor form, the real part means cosine minus j mean sine. So this is 0 minus j100. That's your input. The resistors don't change. Capacitor becomes 1 over j omega c. So capacitor becomes minus j 15.9 ohms. Now write the node equations, exactly like we did before, only now I've got this extra term, that minus j 19.51, this is the current at ground through the capacitor. So whatever we did at DC still works at AC, only now I have complex numbers. To solve, again group the terms just like we did at DC. Put in matrix form, I've got three equations, three unknowns, albeit with complex numbers. Throw in MATLAB and solve. Uh, again, the solution is just like we had before, except now the answer is complex. What the answer means is the real part is cosine minus j is sine. So V1 is 30.3 cosine 20 pi t plus 59 sine 20 pi t. To check your answers in circuit lab, it's a little bit easier to convert to polar form. In polar form, you take the, the magnitude of the complex number, that's the amplitude. Take the angle of the complex number, that's your phase shift. This is what the output looks like in polar form. That's what you see in circuit lab. In circuit lab, what I'll do is I'll change the input to 0 volts DC, 100 volts AC, 10 hertz. And now we'll do simulate time domain. Let's run it for 0.3 seconds. At 10 hertz, uh, the period is 0.1 seconds, so this is three cycles. I'm going to have a thousand points in my plot. There's 100 points in the plot. 300 points in the plot. And look at V1, V2, V3, and output, and then run. These are the voltages. The peak tells the amplitude. So here at the, the green line, the peak is 100 volts. The blue line, the peak is 66 volts. Orange line, Rather hard to tell. Let's do this. Sixty six volts. Here's B two. B two is fifty one volts. And B three is forty seven volts. Uh, checking. And MATLAB. That's exactly what we got. So that what you get from this is that DC is just like AC, only now we're using complex numbers. That's the beauty of complex numbers. Circuit analysis, everything we learned before, everything that you will learn in circuits one, 
for current loops, voltage nodes, um, solving n equations out of nodes, works at AC just like DC. Only in AC, you use complex numbers.